a lot of technicians in the commercial market have to install and adjust belts. And these fan belts are getting less and less as blower motors and fan motors get to be more and more direct drive. Uh, but you still see a lot of them out there, and knowing how to install them and adjust them is going to be really key to your success. Now, the first thing I want to do is dispel some myths. A lot of people will say things like you want to tension a belt till it has half inch of deflection or one inch of deflection. But that really can't be the case because obviously it would depend on how hard you squeezed, how strong your hands were, and how long the belt was, and what type of belt it was for that rule to make sense. So a lot of technicians have come up with, you know, sort of calibrated fingers as far as what is and is not the correct tension for a belt. So there are no simple rules of thumb, but you do have to know a little bit about belts before we can go any further. The first is I suggest that you get the Browning app. Browning does a great job of describing how all of this works. They also have some tools that will help you tension. So reference their information as much as possible. If you have an adjustable drive pulley, a lot of people call it a shiv or, you know, it's kind of spelled like sheave. Uh, if you have one of those adjustable drive pulleys, do not adjust the adjustable drive pulley in order to set the belt tension. You set the be belt tension by adjusting. Generally, it's going to be the foot mount of the motor in order to tension and untension. Make sure before you replace a belt, uh, or if you have a belt that's squealing before you adjust it, that you've actually inspected the drive and the driven pulley to ensure that the pulley itself is in proper condition. And in many cases, the pullings will actually get worn out, so they'll have a really smooth surface or they'll be an incorrect shape. You can get a pulley gauge to actually see if it is worn or not, um, but many times you can just do that just by paying attention to it, kind of rolling around looking for uh, ridges or damage to the pulley. If you do have a damaged pulley, you're going to want to replace the pulleys, and you're going to want to do that sooner than later before they start eating up a bunch of belts or before you get squealing or things like that. Here in this image, you can see some of the different components to the adjustable drive pulley, the one that we call the, the shiv. And with the adjustable drive pulley, adjusting the two halves of the pulley closer together results in more airflow and adjusting it further apart results in less. That's only something a test and balance organization or somebody who's doing a commissioning would set or maybe a retro commissioning because you have to measure airflow in order to do that properly. In the field, we are not going to be adjusting that adjustable drive pulley. But if we are going to replace a belt, the right thing to do is to adjust it inward, adjust the motor base inward so that way the belt gets loose, or put the new belt on, and then retension it appropriately. And the best way to do that is with a tensioning tool. Now, I know a lot of you won't be using a tensioning tool, um, but again, I suggest you use the Browning Toolbox Technician app. And Browning uses this line in the app, which I think is brilliant. It says, ideal tension is the lowest tension at which the belt will not slip at peak conditions, meaning when that motor is starting, that's generally when it's going to have that kind of peak load on it. You don't want that motor to slip or squeal. If you've ever heard a belt that's squealing whenever the motor starts, you can know how annoying that can be, and that creates further wear to the pulleys. But you don't want it any tighter than that. A lot of technicians will incorrectly state that you're supposed to set belt tension based on blower amperage, and that's a terrible idea. The belt tension is placing some forces onto that blower motor shaft, but potentially, and as you, as you know with many other motors, that motor could run uh, you know, a decent level below its full load amperage based on how the adjustable drive pulley is set. And if you are tensioning it so tight that you're actually binding down those bearings and making the motor draw higher amperage, you're doing damage to the motor, the motor bearings, the pulleys, the belt, everything else. So do not over-tighten a belt. You want to get it just tight enough so that way there is no squealing and no slipping even on start, but no tighter than that. Now, again, because they can start to kind of wear in pretty quickly, technically you're supposed to go back and adjust uh, within a few hours of initially running it or a few days. Um, and, you know, we know that's probably not practical in a lot of cases unless you're in a maintenance environment where you're maybe doing facilities and you're always at the same site. So you may be a little bit tighter than that, but you don't want to stretch belts out. You also see a lot of techs go back and keep adjusting belts and stretching them and stretching them. If a belt is stretched enough that you need a significant adjustment, then you need to go ahead and just get a new belt. And then also pay attention to that pulley and pulley condition. Now, again, a proper tensioning tool allows you to apply a set amount of force and then look at a fixed amount of 
deflection. And again, Browning has some great videos on this, and they have a tool specifically made for this purpose that you can use. Again, refer to their application. A lot of technicians, again, aren't even aware that this exists. I suggest to attack, even if you're not going to use it every single time, do it on several occasions until you can get used to what the proper tensioning is for that particular belt with that particular width. Because there is so much variation, using a rule of thumb like half inch deflection just makes no sense because you don't have a fixed amount of force that you use. So that's it. When you're replacing a belt, make sure that you loosen it all up so that way you're not stretching the belt to roll it on or roll it off. Don't adjust the belt significantly. If you need significant adjustments, then just get a new belt. Inspect your pulleys. Do not adjust an adjustable drive pulley in the field unless you're doing something like a retro commissioning or a test and balance, you know, an application where you're actually going to be measuring airflow and making sure that it fits. And do not over tighten a belt so that way you're binding down on that motor. The old line that we set our belt tension based on blower motor current could not be more incorrect. Final thing I'll mention is that in some cases you get slippage and that sort of thing just because of the conditions around the belt, whether it's greasy or oily. If you have anything like that, make sure you clean it and make sure you address the source of the problem uh, before just constantly adjusting or replacing belts. So install your belts properly, tension them properly, and pay close attention to pulleys and you'll be just fine. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing, you can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.